to you from Little Rock, Arkansas. Welcome to Sips on the Rock with Legacy Wine and Spirits. Join hosts and store owners Johnny Akins and David Bevins, along with product expert extraordinaire Jake Dell, as we chat about booze, news, and other happenings in the wide world of wine and spirits. Now, let's get to sipping. Hello. <laughs> Welcome Hello. Back. Welcome back. Welcome back, Johnny. Yes, thank you. I almost, I almost bailed on you guys today because I'm not feeling good. I'm a big, I'm a huge baby, but I don't feel good. <laughs> the worst patient ever. I am. I want to put up our uh, put on one of our nice legacy shirts. No, nope, didn't even, couldn't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> not even a cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness. So um, where are we at? What day is this even? Today is what, Thursday, the 12th of January, 2023. <laughs> so we've gotten past the holidays. We've gotten past New Year's. Um, a little, of bit, of a yeah, little yeah, bit of a breather. A little bit of a breather. Things are, it's a slower time of the year for us. And, and, of course, you know, everybody's trying to do this whole dry January business, which I don't. Uh, I, shy. Yeah. I don't support. I don't know about everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> I say Some. expand your palate. Don't, right. don't limit yourself. Right. <clears throat> Speaking of the... Uh, end of 22 we just got back from our little uh, long weekend vacation yeah uh, jumped down to mexico for a bit of sand and surf and sun it was so nice and warm but uh traveling my god traveling is just a freaking nightmare now it's a mess. i mean you you hear all these uh you know the southwest problems they had last week uh but gala it's just everything you know yeah. like we had uh there was a group of us and one of them made it to the plane and told the people at the gate like <laughs> they're coming they're literally right behind me and as we approached the gate uh they had already given our seats away to the people that were on standby <laughs> 10 minutes before the before the flight was even supposed, supposed well, to I mean, the yeah. doors were still open <laughs> people still boarding and like <clears throat> they were like no you can't go <laughs> so we got stuck in Dallas uh that night. Uh no of course, luggage. No, yeah, no luggage, but you know, of <laughs> course we we made the best of it and uh Ubered into town from the airport. Yep. Had some drink poos. No luggage, man. Nice. Well, yeah, was, you know, it was the, a good time. The <laughs> yeah. the hotel was nice enough to give us a little care package with uh, some <clears throat> toothbrush and right, toothpaste. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so as not to be so offensive in the morning. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean same clothes after traveling through a airport for you know a day and a half yeah such a nightmare traveling is awful if you can i highly suggest you get your own jet <laughs> right yes, yes. <laughs> i suggest it too <laughs> and invite me to go <laughs> or an rv works you know we're uh we're about to pack it up and hit the road pack it up yep. yeah yep, yep. have have a. Uh, Office will travel. That's right. <laughs> well, we may have to pick you guys up uh, on the show from an RV uh, at the end of this month. <laughs> All right. Right? That could sure. be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Next destination is Austin, which is a hell of a fun town. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so. Enough about us. Back to the show. <laughs> right, 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 right. Sorry, me, we, me, 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 <laughs> me. Like, we can talk about booze at some point. Right? <laughs> well, why uh, take it away? Yeah, we have a couple of cool, exciting new products to talk about today. We're not uh, laser focused on one area. We just we got some cool new bottles. We'll talk about them and talk about some other stuff. Um, I think the Mexico trip is a nice segue into Dos Hombres. Dos Hombres. Mezcal. Now, we have not tried this one, uh, but you have, Jake. I tried both of these products this week. Uh, both very good. The Dos Hombres is uh, not made by, but the spokespersons are the two guys from Breaking Bad, Aaron Paul and uh, what's his name? Brian Cranston. Yeah, oh, cool. Right. So they got really into it apparently when they were filming down in Mexico and met some maker, you know, and loved what they were trying and say, you know, we'll we'll give you some money and you know, put our weight behind it. And they've they've even done weird like little pop up things around the country where Rachel said they showed up at some bar in New Orleans and were pouring it up. They were at a Costco somewhere. Like you'd be walking down the aisle. And those two celebrities were there like, hey, would you like to try this, this mezcal? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, no, so there's no 
there's no blue meth in this though, right? It's just <laughs> as far as, <laughs> far as I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. No RV cooking. Yeah. Well, this is uh, you know, right up Johnny's alley. He's yep. the mezcal fan here. Now, say, so how does this one hit the palate? So, um, like I was saying a minute ago, it's it's kind of medium smoke, um, <laughs> a lot of citrus going on, um, some soft kind of earthy notes. I was getting in there uh, without getting too specific here, but it was really soft on the palate and really dr drinking really easy and, and nice did you have it neat or were you yeah you know just yeah. a little sample cup sample oh, okay. pour of it gotcha. on its own no ice or anything and yeah it was really clean and crisp and yeah it was well, really I'll good how we try it mm -hmm. did you say smoke heavy smoke or no no kind of in the middle i'd say you know it's there but it's not overpowering and you know they didn't shy away from it but again just you can tell it's a quality made product and not just something they slap their faces the on that mm -hmm. sucks you know yeah right. it's in the bottle it's good it's good <clears throat> so we're checking out our our mezcal section is always growing i feel like we're you know one of the stores on the forefront of getting getting the word out there to the customer about mezcal and we have some on the sample bar you know we did a lot of stuff with the desert door sotol and other agave spirits that aren't tequila because there's a lot well, and you know, interestingly enough, talking about tequila, I, I read an article while we were gone, uh, talking about uh, basically Weber Blue Agave, which is the one used for tequila, mm -hmm. uh, is kind of in peril, you know, because they've been cloning it for so many years as opposed to regrowing it from seed. Because it takes like seven years to mature or something crazy, right? It, it, it does, but like they're cloning the same plant over yeah. and over and over, which it builds up no resistance to new diseases. Uh -huh. And so like something could happen and wipe out all the uh, all the existing Weber blue agaves because like very, very, very few people are growing it from seed or even allowing the plants to seed out. Right. So, yeah, it's a it's a dangerous thing. Yeah. What would happen if there was no more Weber Blue Agave? I mean, I oh feel like gosh. that would kind of, you know, swing more people to start drinking mezcal that is yeah. a little looser <laughs> with the regulations of what it can be made of and where it has to be made. And so, well, when we went down to uh, uh, Patron well, a few years ago, you would be amazed at how many truckloads, how many tons of piñas that they go through in a day, like. Do you recall? I mean, it was like. I mean, that, listen. I was. I was. I'll say. I was drinking that day. <laughs> we, were, we were sampling some tequilas, but I'm pretty sure that I heard them say they go through like 20 tons of, of pinas a day that they roast. Wow. Uh, yeah. And can you imagine, like, if 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 each my numbers, one is really if, big if, and if heavy? My, right? If my number is, yeah. is, is correct, then you know those <clears throat> those truckloads that they that they roast every day and process. Um. That that. Each little individual pina took like what six, seven years yeah, to, totally. to grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know when you when you pull up all those out of out of one field, yeah, and you replant them, that's they have to wait a while. So Long just imagine period. how how many fields in Mexico have to be just covered yeah. in in, yeah. in agave in order to keep the and it's not just obviously Patron that's there. There's all there's all kinds of tequilas that are processing a lot of pinas every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you know we're we're saying pina. We're not talking about pina colada no pineapple <laughs> right, yeah, it's like yeah. when the uh when the agave plant is sheared down from its spikes by the el jimador because it looks it like looks like a, a pineapple, pineapple wood now. yeah and yeah. so they call it a pina yeah, they do call it it's like pine, pine i think it means pineapple pine. yeah oh, okay yeah weird yeah that's that's that that's pineapple another goal i'm apple. gonna expand my spanish this year as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> For my eventual and inevitable uh, breakaway yeah, yeah. retirement <laughs> to Mexico, to the, to the beaches of Mexico, <laughs> we might just open a pina stand. <laughs> <laughs> Not beyond the realm of possibilities. So anyway, yeah. So uh, this and several, several other mezcals we have in new. You need to come check them out I we know. got stuff that you can yeah they have on the bottle like what lot where the location was of the single you know plot that they got all of it from and you know where it was cooked and everything and batch number and all sorts of stuff so it's it's not like because it's not tequila that it's like just a mystery what's in the bottle right you have some 
farmers and producers who are like, I mean, you know, like farm to table kind of stuff. Like you can see exactly where it came from and when it was made and bottled and blah, 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 all that stuff. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a very uh, rapidly expanding category. Mm-hmm. Uh, and especially here in our store, it's a, uh, along with our shelf reset downstairs, we're going to be making a lot more room for tequila, tequila, mezcal, soto. So yeah, anyway, yeah, fun stuff. Come try it out. What's this next neat little product there? So blade and bow, Kentucky bourbon. Show off the key, John. (laughs) So it being, uh, a Stitzel Weller, uh, they're doing a little thing with the keys, kind of like the Blanton horses. There's five, five different, different keys. keys. I like it just as oh, a thing. You cool. have to you have to rip the key open to get the bottle open, and so it's like the key is unlocking the bottle. Well, <laughs> and then you can, <laughs> each one of these, there's five different kinds of keys that represent the five iron keys that were on the old door of Stitzelweller, and there's a whole story in a club you can be in if you collect them all. And, Oh, a yeah. club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been I've been drinking a little more bourbon lately and uh I bought a bottle and took it home and tried some and it's it's tasty. Stitzel Weller, the distillery, has a long uh history. Um I think back in like nineteen thirty two. Where'd it go here? So uh they used to produce brands W. L. Weller, Old Fitzgerald, Pappy Van Winkle. Old Weller, Rebel Yell, blah, blah, blah. And then it closed in 1972. And then the assets and the brands were like sold off, oh, wow. you know, to different. And so, um, it says, so Buffalo Trace got the lion's share of that. Buffalo, was- yeah, Buffalo Trace took a lot of them, you know, it's Sazerac. And then Old Fitzgerald went to Heaven Hill. Diageo got Bullet and is now, since Diageo bought it and it reopened in 2014. They still had some barrels in there of old products, you know, that were just still sitting there. And so Blade and Bow uses a Solera process. <laughs> you see it in Scotch whiskey. Uh, Glenn Fittick famously uses a Solera process. What does that mean? So they have like, they'll take old barrels and, you know, they'll have their big vats where they do their blending. And so they'll blend in the old stuff with fresher, younger whiskeys, I should say, and then pull from that. And so it's all blended together. So in this bottle, you have some amount of some stuff that's 30 year old whiskey that was produced at a very famous distillery. And then as you go through more, you're adding newer. And so the amount of that old stuff is, is less and less, but it's, it's all mixing and melding together, you know? And so it doesn't itself has an age statement because there's so many different aged whiskeys in there well and it would have to have the youngest age if they did right. you you have yeah. to yeah put the youngest whiskey that's you in can't there. put the oldest right <laughs> like one drop of 30 right right, right. <laughs> that'd make it a 30 year old bourbon <laughs> uh, but yeah it's new to arkansas we've had questions about it for you know a couple a year or two and um it's a bourbon geek type of thing for not breaking the bank again from a uh you know renowned distillery even though it's not producing the same brands as it used to um Orphan Barrel that we did one of those bottles for the whiskey lottery. Mm-hmm. We saw that on there, and so it makes sense. They're doing this, I.W. Harper, and all the Orphan Barrel stuff. So yeah, that's I cool. imagine some of those barrels that they're getting for the Orphan Barrel stuff is going into the the vats too for their Solera. Right. So the, but there was a <laughs> age statement. What like a twenty two, twenty three year? They do make a twenty two. Apparently, yeah. they do Blade and Bow and Blade and Bow twenty two, twenty two year that we did not get. So don't call us asking for that, but <laughs> maybe we'll get it for next year or I mean, later this year, whiskey lottery, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure something like that would be an allocated item. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really delicious stuff. You're trying to is drink this, my empty yeah, water is bottle. This, is this available? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty fruity profile on this here. Um, and a lot of the sweet kind of caramel and not a ton of typical like cinnamon. Um, I think they use a lot of wheat in here too. You didn't get a lot of rye spice. Um, yeah, it kind of trended towards that stone fruit, fruity side while still having some good classic bourbon notes. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. That's good. Cool. Well, that's good. Of these will have to and yeah, it. I think it's 50, 50 something on the shelf. So again, 
Good value. Good yeah. value for not breaking the bank. We don't even have it in the reserve room. It's it's not on the shelf. Wow. Should be ready to, you know, readily available. I mean, so part of our new bourbon reset mm-hmm. is still underway, but mm-hmm. uh rapidly expanding. So we're excited about that as well. You know, start out the new year with some freshness. Yep. Yeah. What else is exciting? Oh, yeah. no. Talk about yourself. Oh, yeah. man. Like, well, <laughs> not to, 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 to your own horn there. Not to bring the uh, conversation back around to me. <laughs> but I, <laughs> you know, I had said that I wanted to uh, get my beer server, which is the first step <clears throat> in uh, the Cicerone certification program. And I did it yesterday. Ooh, I know. I uh, started reading, <laughs> which, you know, I mean, I, I I already had a, a, a decent base knowledge on beer. So I would say I, better than decent. I read up for the past couple of days and uh, took the I practice took it, test. Took the practice test, <laughs> yeah. passed the press practice test, and then, and then you know I, I got a study guide and read through the study guide, and uh, so then yeah, I, I, I took the test yesterday afternoon, and I passed. So yeah, I am Legacy's newest. Did you did you share, share the score? You got a hundred percent, right? Well, that was on the practice test. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> How many did you miss on the regular one? Because it, was it still like, is it 75 questions? It was 60. 60. Um, I forget. I think it was like 10 or so. There was a lot of stuff on there that was not covered in the sure, study guide. They can't give you everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and those freaking Belgian beers. I was about beers. to say, you told me uh, Belgians were your kind of weak point. So we'll have to do a Belgian beer episode soon and open up a couple. And, and I mean, there was some interesting stuff that I read about, about them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's never been an exciting style for me, so I've never really uh, paid too much attention to it, and I guess I should have prior to taking this test. Yeah, perhaps I would have scored higher. Kind of daunting. Uh, it's reminiscent to me of Italian wines. Yeah, not necessarily because they're all named after where they came from, um, like some German beers are, but the fact that they've been made for so long. They don't adhere to the rules that most of the rest of the right. world uses. Yeah, so right. they're kind of doing their own thing and they get away with it because they've been doing it longer than almost everybody. So right. they don't care. And you know, <laughs> mo- a lot of it's made by monks. So I guess yeah, they answer to a higher power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not your stupid earthly rules and regulations. <laughs> Pasha, Germany. FDA. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was... Uh, one of my goals. You're already doing it. Check off my list this year. Huh? Yeah, we had the, one of the things that David asked everybody to do was come up with a, a New Year's resolution. What would you like to accomplish in 2023? And that was his on his list, and everybody had theirs. We're actually publishing those on on uh, I think social media. I think yours comes out next week. Well, that would drives. make sense, so wouldn't was, it? So, yeah. yeah <laughs> so I was wondering. Uh, yours said you wanted to build a piece of furniture. So is that, right. is that done yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's January 12th. Jan- <laughs> well, yeah. David finished his on January 12th. Yeah, what was yours? Did you do yours? <laughs> uh, mine was a retired move to Mexico. So <laughs> I've got a little ways to go. Still had <laughs> Well, what, what, uh, what piece of furniture? Well, so again, I, I don't know. You know, I, I but, step stool. Yeah, maybe <laughs> something that will go in the house and not just right. make it in so terrible that it gets thrown away or put out on the street you know but something that we will <clears throat> have in the house start simple a bird house yeah well yeah <laughs> maybe something a little more lamp because i work with my hands and do other stuff but i want to get into wood working so that'd be cool that would be cool yeah, yeah. Well, well you'll have to keep us uh, i will abreast of your progress <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah once you come up with an idea right i have an uncle that does that uh that kind of stuff he's pretty good at it mm-hmm Uncle so George, I can I can see how that would be uh, appealing, but I don't have the time. I just don't have the time. I don't want to sit down and read a book. I'm just like I don't have time. I can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always on the go, and when I'm at home, I just want to see. And that's what I, I mean. I read mind. like anything I pick up, I'll read. I mean, like that's as long as a paragraph, I'm like, nope. <laughs> you won't even read Not a long time. Readings for the birds. Uh, huh? for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> what stupid learning. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Mardi Gras is upon us. We've already been having people call in the store asking where are the damn king cakes. <laughs> they have arrived today. We Ooh. got in the king cakes. Uh, again, this year, they were uh, cutting down on the flavors. There's just the cream cheese and the, uh, the 
traditional cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, well, we used to have like five four or five. Or five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're just not available any longer. Uh, same with uh, the Cheesecake Factory cheesecakes. Like, I mean, we couldn't get all the flavors we used to. Mm. So, you know what? It, Slim well, pickings out there. When we were selling those during the holidays, the only one that really mattered to me was the pumpkin anyway. So, can we get that? No. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Man, so, we didn't so even good. bring any of them in. We're like, but heard about it. Like, I'm just not going to order anything. Yeah. <laughs> we demand variety. <laughs> we are demanding people. Yeah. But so, yeah, come get your king cakes. Uh, it is Mardi Gras season. I'll be taking them home and a bottle of this uh, mezcal. Mm -hmm. Mezcal and king cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. <laughs> <laughs> You're not on vacation no, anymore. No, no. <laughs> I got dried up a little bit. <laughs> do 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 do. Oh yeah. So Monday, Arkansas State Legislation went into session. Oh boy, oh boy. It's always a fun time of year. Yeah. Right? Fun fun year when that happens. Uh, not nerve nothing at all, uh, right? involving our industry has uh, been introduced yet. But yeah. that's I, I watch it like a hawk. <laughs> and again, we 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 never want to get too political on this show. But ever, ever, ever. but you know if there's <laughs> if there's an issue that comes up that I think you might be interested in hearing about, we don't I'm have like, to give our take. No spin right. zone. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, 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 exactly. <laughs> Only the facts. Well, we will uh, keep you abreast of things happening. There was one interesting one I read about. Uh, no, nah, never mind. Uh, We're, probably a good call. Probably, yeah, good, probably call. a good call. I, I felt I yeah. felt Johnny cringe. Yeah. I did. <laughs> hold your breath. Hold your breath. That's the one thing I worry about when I'm not here is what's being said. I'm, I'm generally the censor. <laughs> we'll schedule some uh, some unscheduled shows <laughs> without Johnny, so we can talk politics. Yeah. <clears throat> we would never. We would never. We would never. So I read something. Does anybody know where the word cocktail came from? I do not. I've never even thought about it. Never even thought about it. So, you know, there's like these uh, far more nerdier than I linguistic people that, you know, research where the origins of words, you know, and uh, this this guy, he's written a book, did all this research, and he found like a a mention in a 1789 London newspaper hmm. of the word cocktail. First mention he could ever find of the word cocktail. I'm sure some bar claims, lays claim to like, we invented the word cocktail if it was in England. It's probably still around, you know? <laughs> I would, probably, but the um, the origin is just so bizarre. Okay, so like, it has to do with ginger and horse anuses. What? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> this is an interesting story, all right? Yeah. No, so like they, uh, like, you know, back then, and I think it's a rule still enacted today that you cannot rub ginger on a horse's anus any longer. Because, like, you know, these horses would get <laughs> old. They do a spit take all over the computer. <laughs> <laughs> they would get old and tired. And, like, so they'd rub the ginger on it. So it would, like, irritate him. And it like, kick his tail up. And it cock his tail up. And make him look young and spry. Right, right. And so, like, they were oh, also terrible. equating, in, uh, introducing ginger into your drink. To give you that spunk. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Wow. That, that is very interesting. A horse anus plus ginger equals cocktail. We always yeah. try to give a little learning on this yeah. show. <laughs> I'm not going to forget that. <laughs> it's like for like dressage and like equestrian stuff, like, oh, like that horse's tail is down. Got to figure out something right. to rub down on his butt. Put some <laughs> ginger on it. I mean, it would be yeah. mildly irritating. I imagine, yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. God. It's terrible. 
<laughs> See, I bring all the stupid savant knowledge to the show. <laughs> we'll have to do some more research on that one to make sure that's true. Well, I read it on How the can it not be true? It's <laughs> way <laughs> too weird. That is <laughs> way too weird. <laughs> Nobody would make that up. No. <laughs> well, and, I mean, the specifics. I have people's names. And oh. Pictures. The whole, the whole picture. thing. Picture. <laughs> Pop up pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no like, here i got the proof yeah <laughs> this is not that kind of show good grief well on did, that note did, well <laughs> well did we run through everything blah 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 i don't think that we ever got a, a, a goal out of johnny other than retiring to mexico oh that was just jokey no that yeah. was actually my response but i uh i, I haven't actually thought of a, tr- a, a for real one so he's way behind he doesn't even have I one have, yeah. <laughs> getting on my resolution not- is not to make a resolution to impose on myself <laughs> <laughs> well and that's you know that's something i think i want to um like i said expand my spanish vocabulary for that inevitable retirement to mexico yeah yeah maybe mine would be just to remove myself from stressful situations and but you gotta come to work. I know. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna remove myself from. I'm just getting gonna, back if to I the start retiring. Getting irritated and stressed out. I'm just gonna go home. Well, <laughs> since I uh, already knocked out my beer server goal, I think I might. I mean, I'm not. I'm not setting this as a goal, but I might uh, try to go for level one cicerone, which you know is much, much more involved. Than, sure. Than the beer server, yeah. so. Jake and I will have to do quite a bit of studying. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was, you guys know that Jake did that. So I mean, there's there's a lot involved in that. It's I mean, mm-hmm. many should, different areas, and yeah, it's not just written tests. I mean, you have to be able to like taste things and identify things, and yeah, and then they they trick you and uh, add things to the beer to to spoil it, and mm-hmm. you have to identify what spoiled it, and yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Maybe we'll even get a group. I think that uh, Leah, she's not quite a cert, uh, level one, right? No, no. But she's she's been studying. Yeah. So. For, for, okay. She's, Study yeah. group. Yeah, yeah. Group, I know. <laughs> That'll be a lot of fun. Totally. So, a, again, just, you know, further driving home the fact that we have the most educated staff. <laughs> and, and willing to educate. And, oh yeah, and and they, want to, to they want to they want to know further. everything so that they can pass it on to you. Yeah, I mean, Rachel's doing her studies. Mm-hmm. Leah is, I is. So yeah, come learn something from us. <laughs> we are full of knowledge. You want to know where a cocktail came from? <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to tell that yeah. story in the store. <laughs> some some old lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old tired lady yeah, down there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you need. <laughs> Some ginger. All right. Okay, folks. Well, come see us in the store. But also, if you're enjoying our podcast as much as we are, Tell some folks about it. Tell your mama, tell your church group, tell your book club. Yep. You share, know, share, share it. Share the links that we've seen. Yeah. Like and share and comment, you know. Make sure you follow us and like us. Throw a question out at us. Love to have some interaction with the listeners. Right? It would be really cool. We got we have to figure out some sort of way to do that since we're not doing these live anymore. Right. Um but not that, that was happening anyways, but um Well, I mean they we'll, can we'll comment some sort of email on, the, on the they can comment on it and we can address it later. That's true. That's true. We are, we are supposed to be. I don't, I, I, I'm fairly certain that Katie's been posting all of our uh, uh, episode links onto our uh, YouTube sips on the rock oh. on our Facebook page, right? Yeah, with yeah. links to the YouTube, right? Thing. So, right. Yeah, because we are everywhere. That's right. <laughs> all right, folks. We'll see you next time. Keep on sipping. Bye. Thanks for joining. Remember to subscribe to our podcast, Sips on the Rock, and like us on all the socials to keep up with what's new in the wide world of alcohol. Shop LegacyLR.com for curbside pickup or local delivery. Remember, for better service and better selection, shop local. Please enjoy responsibly. Cheers. Cheers.